I want to bring in Amy Boggs now in this conversation. She is the head of the Property Insurance Division of the Florida Trial Lawyer Association. Knows a lot about this. Amy, I'm glad you're with us this morning. Thank you. So I was, I was looking at some of these notes. Uh, insurance industry and Governor DeSantis, you say, the claims about litigation and past legislation being the reason for the industry's failure in Florida are baseless and a distraction from the real issue. Explain why that is. Yeah, so in Florida, we have a problem where we've got an insurance industry that has been allowed to run amok. And when I say that, what I mean is that the carriers point to fraud as the problem and fraudulent claims, uh, yet the legislation that they're trying to pass and that they have successfully passed in this administration really cuts down on valid claims for homeowners. So I've got clients who are still living in a, a trailer RV in front of their home uh, from Hurricane Michael four years ago. So we have an insurance industry who has Un, not timely or fully paid their claims. And instead of cracking down on that and dealing with those insurance companies, they are trying to penalize valid claims and, and homeowners. You know, when you look at so Amy, Floridians pay an annual insurance rate that's three times the national average. Is that right? I don't think that that number is necessarily fully accurate, but they do pay a higher rate. That problem, we have to look at that. What is that? That's not a litigation problem. That's a mismanagement. 89% of Floridians want more financial transparency. We have an insurance regulator who has passed 1,500 rate increases in this past seven years uh, with no accountability on that. So we have a situation where we have a much more expensive insurance product and we have a diminishing product at that. What do I mean by that? You're paying more and getting less and it's not fair. Then when you do have a claim, when you're at your worst sitting there in front of your house, that has been destroyed. The insurance company has been given license uh, to act with impunity if they don't fully pay your claim. And that's really the problem here. Um, is insurance companies have been emboldened to deny and delay valid claims, and that leads to litigation. One thing you've said is lawmakers need to stand with homeowners as they begin this process. What's your advice to homeowners, though? Lawmakers need to do their part, clearly, and it's not been working in last storms. But what do people at home who, as we see on this screen, have lost completely everything need to do in these first steps? So the first thing to realize is that your your damage is probably implicated by two different policies. You have a homeowner's policy that covers your wind and you have a flood policy if you do that covers your flood claim. If you don't have a flood policy, you can apply to FEMA for assistance. Um, so basically you need to put your carriers on notice, start making a list of the things that you've lost and look for temporary housing. Uh, this is going to be a long rebuilding process. Process. It, it really is. Once you, you have uh, received your insurance proceeds, we saw this in Michael, it takes years sometimes to rebuild. And when I say legislatures should stand with homeowners, they need to make insurance companies pay their claims quickly so these communities can get rebuilt. If they they can't, if we can't rebuild Fort Myers because the insurance industry hasn't paid their claims, what kind of loss is that to the state of Florida and the people of that community? Are we seeing that type of pressure from lawmakers on insurance companies? I mean, look at the past storms. Um, it didn't really happen then. Right. And that's the problem. The, the pushback has been, well, listen, there are invalid claims, there's insurance fraud. We need to disincentivize people from suing. They point to the high litigation rates and say, look, there's a bunch of people running around suing us. In what other context would we blame the victim there, right? If we had a baby seat manufacturer who was being sued at high, high rates, we would say there's something wrong. We wouldn't look at the, the you know, parents of the dead children and say, why are you suing this manufacturer? So the, the high litigation rates are an indication that carriers are not fully paying their claims. And instead of getting on board with that message and trying to put pressure, like, for example, the insurance regulator in the state of Louisiana, pulled insurance companies to task and said, hey, wait a minute, you're not paying quickly. You're not paying enough.
Yeah. Well, I mean, you have insurance because when you need it, you expect it to be there, right? That's why we pay it all year long for a multitude of different things. I'm glad you brought up FEMA. I want to play for folks at home and for you as well. A Governor DeSantis talking about FEMA aid, and then we'll chat on the back end. Okay. FEMA has certain things they can do via statute regulation, but if it falls outside of that, they just can't do it. That's not the way it works. And so when you enlist private organizations, they can be a little bit more nimble. They can tailor their response to maybe some of the more unique needs that citizens may have. And, and obviously, you, you have people that have been di uh, dislocated. You, you have people that no longer have homes. Uh, and so there's going to be a wide variety of things uh, that they're going to need uh, in the coming days, weeks, and months. He's talking about shouldering the burden, right? It can't just be on private groups. It can't be on certain insurance companies. FEMA plays a role. Is the federal government shouldering enough of the burden after hurricanes like we've seen in years past and specifically with Ian now? And the answer to that, I would say, is no. Folks are really left to their own devices. It's sad. But if you're relying on the government to come in your hour of need here for a longer term solution, uh, meaning where are you going to live until your home is rebuilt, which might take two years or more, they're not going to offer that type of assistance for you. This is why we have insurance. This is why we have a private insurance market. And and Floridians pay dearly for that. And so it's really time, uh, again, for this governor, the uh, insurance commissioner to stand up and say, listen, pay your claims fully and timely. We don't want to be in a situation where we're flooded with complaints about people not getting their claims paid. Well, it's an, it's, an om it's an ominous journey that they have ahead. And Amy, I agree, it is frustrating in people's greatest time of need that they have to jump through so many hoops um, to get the aid that they so deserve and that they've been paying for because they right. had insurance. Uh, come back and talk to us because this is going to continue to be an issue. And I'd like to see the pressure um, be put on so many different groups to make changes that we don't have to be talking about this after the next storm. I would love to come back, and I, I have a million things to say on this topic. All right. Thanks, Amy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.